Ladies and gentlemen, now in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the patch notes for tomorrow's update. So let's go over some of the headlines before we get stuck into the details here. Uh, so we've got the new story, Chapter 12.5, so rounding off Season 2 there. We've also got the incredibly new fun and interactive character that everybody is so excited for. There's so much positive energy, everybody just can't wait for this character to be in the game. Goddess Elizabeth, man, she's so much fun. You've got a shield, you've got a revive, you've got a stupid stupidly broken ultimate everything about this character is just stupidly broken she's a great time for pve but pvp is going to be a little bit of a nightmare however i think with the king of fighters characters there are uh counter teams that are going to be immediately available to goddess liz and teams that are going to work well for the very fun combination of um uh, Goddess Liz, Lost Fame, Meliodas, and King. So I think we've got like a little bit more diversity, especially with Halloween go through as well. Uh, if you did get lucky on that banner, uh, however, again, if you spend all your gems on Waifu Man, it is going to be a bit of a rough time for the next few weeks in PvP. But again, Netmarble rushing the fuck out of everything. <laughs> They're probably also going to rush the fuck out of the counters as well. Uh, so Droll and Easton hopefully shouldn't be too far around the corner if you do get sick and tired of Goddess Liz, which I imagine. Uh, being a human, you probably will. Also, we're going to get a free 6-6 Captain Hawk. Now, this character on release on the Japanese version was insanely overpowered in PvE because he had a super, super good passive which boosted up all of his... Um, uh, stats in PvE by 50%, and that includes like everything, including the substats as well. So crit chance, crit damage, resistance, life steal as well. This guy was a mega tank, just hit everything so hard. And if you were struggling in the story, he was already a cheat code to a lot of stuff to use. Um, so yeah, Hawk is just like amazing. If he is going in at the same uh, power level that he came in on JP, uh, so yeah, I'm not too sure. They haven't mentioned anything about him being buffed up because he was buffed up for like a month and then kind of reverted to 15% increase uh, to all of his stats but he's got a pierce card and I think at least to the best of my memory I think this card was single target uh, I don't know if this is an error on GC database or if they changed the character since I last played him but then we've also got his ultimate as well uh, which decreases health related stats by 40% for two turns but again the thing that made this character so crazy on the Japanese version is the fact that he had a 50% increase to all of his stats so Hawk was just really really insane there uh, just very impressive also as well if you're like I just really don't care about this character and I want the coins to put into Zeldris that is your choice as well so you can have just a single Hawk and five SSR coins I think because this character is pretty exclusive for the most part um, and he's certainly not too bad when his passive does get buffed up for PvE I probably put the coins in uh, but again it depends on your scenario and how desperate you are to buy stuff from the coin shop because uh, yeah I don't think even one is a um a bad play depending on you know where your roster and box is at because uh, some of those coin shop units can be very very crazy uh, so yeah alongside everything else as well we're going to have uh, the new Goddess Liz banner tomorrow which also has Lost Vein Meliodas in again it's going to be 900 loyalty points in order to pick one of the two characters so you do get a selection at 900 there so I think it's going to be uh, very similar to the Japanese banner so just to quickly bring up this banner from the Japanese version Version. It was a 4% SSR banner. However, Goddess Liz and Lost Fame Meliodas only had 0.25% drop rate. Now, this is very important to keep in mind because 0.25 is one in every 400 pulls. So on average, that is 36 multis to see one copy of either character outside of the guaranteed selector. So if you're thinking of going in like, you know, 300 gems deep to this banner, keep that in mind that there is a very very low chance of you seeing either one of these characters the drop rates on these festival banners are incredibly low and i know players that went about 3600 gems deep on this banner and the only copies of goddess liz that they got were the ones from the guaranteed selector so yeah just keep in mind man 0.25 percent is an incredibly low drop rate to get the character and it's only advised summoning on festival banners if you can make sure that you've got all of the gems to guarantee that you get to 900 or my advice would be save until the next festival banner because i know so many people that went um 
anywhere between about 500 to 800 gems on the Lost Fame banner and got nothing that was really useful for their roster. They couldn't guarantee that they got Lost Fame Meliodas and right now they would be in a 10 times better position if they just saved for the next festival banner. So yeah, keep that in mind. Again, it's up to you whether or not you want to gamble if you don't have the 900 gems guaranteed to get Goddess Liz. Uh, but bear in mind that the odds are very, very low when it does come to these festival banners. And Festival King with the... Um, the rate that Netmarble are going at, it's very likely that his banner is going to drop uh, very early into January. So again, that is just a bit of a guess, bit of a speculation. But they're also running out of characters and banners um, that they've already released on the Japanese version of the game. After Goddess Liz, they had time for the King of Fighters banner and also the Attack on Titan collaboration banner as well. And we've already had that stuff on Global. So we're going to be closing in on those remaining characters even faster after this. And I think they're aiming to catch up with the Japanese version uh, for either the one year anniversary or slightly after that. So do keep in mind again, even if you don't get um, uh, Goddess Liz on this banner, it's not the absolute end of the world. Counters will be coming and they'll be coming much faster than they did on the Japanese version. And again, if you did summon on the King of Fighters collab character banner, uh, then you probably already have a couple of teams that are going to work quite well, uh, such as Pierce Man. Pierce should be really, really good. It's viable on the Japanese meta to counter Goddess Liz alt rush teams because the combination of Omega and also Blue Dean, Meliodas and Lilia is just really, really powerful. And also to show you like what else is on this banner we got Zaratros, Zeldris, Roxy, Mono and this is assuming they do it in a similar setup to what they did on the Japanese version and there was a community vote on that uh, so yeah hopefully it's going to be uh, very similar if not exactly the same uh, we also have Green Counter Meliodas, uh, Blue Dean Meliodas, Red King, Green Escanor, Lilia, there's also Valenti on this banner they also did include uh, what is it Gloxenia as well uh, along with Derriere, Easter and Red Esterosa. So Glox is the only character that um, was on this banner that is not currently released on Global. So it would be a massive win in if instead of Glox, they put in, uh, what is it, Green Halloween Gother on this banner, man? That'd be a massive, massive W. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really too sure what to expect when it comes to the sub of this banner, but hopefully it's going to be something of... Um, uh, what is it? Similar, exciting quality. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very interested and excited for this banner myself. Uh, again, I've got the gems saved up on my free-to-play account. I skipped out on Lost Fame Meliodas. Because again, in comparison to the Lost Fame banner, this one is about three to four times better in terms of overall value. But just keep in mind, again, with the pace of global, that King banner is probably going to be coming sooner rather than later. So again, if you don't have the 900 gems to secure Goddess Liz, I would consider saving for that one. Uh, we also are going to have a birthday letter exchange shop and also the world challenge event deathmatch laymac and i think that one is the extreme crab raid so this is a really really easy boss to actually do it with two players but it can be like one man soloed with dairy airy uh so yeah this one is actually really really easy probably one of the um uh, the easiest uh, challenge bosses that they add in. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. But hopefully the rewards last time this surfaced on JP sucked. It was just like a very small amount of gold and it wasn't really worth the hassle. Uh, so hopefully there's going to be a good reward structure uh, alongside this lad as well. And again, there's going to be additional tavern stuff. Uh, you get the various copies of Hort from special missions, logging in, and also I think scoring points on the... Um, uh, the boss challenge as well. Uh, so yeah, Demonic Beast, Laymac, Event Deathmatch. You get the Hawk Cosmetics, SSR Pendant. Uh, I think some Fairy and Demon tickets there. Giant Ticket. Uh, your additional copies of Hawk there as well. So yeah, the stuff doesn't look too crazy. But uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad at all there. Uh, also, we got costumes for Goddess Liz. If you want to spend money to make her an even more Clown Fiesta character, you can certainly do that. And also the return of the... Um, uh, what is it? The cash costumes that come back for Grimoire, Gil Thunder, uh, and also Jericho and Gila. Now, moving down a bit as well, uh, they're actually adding in Black Friday selection bundles tomorrow when Black Friday is still like three weeks away, man. So, yeah, this is a little bit early, but Netmarble, if we know anything, it's that they're never going to miss any opportunity to try and sell you bundles. So, there's going to be a choice of three. I assume the first one uh, isn't going to be that spicy. The second and third ones, they look interesting though, lots of gems, lots of um, 
you know, additional rank up materials, engraving stones. Uh, so yeah, I'm very curious to see if these are actually going to be like really good bundles for the amount spent, or if they're just like kind of rebranded standard bundles that they've added in the Japanese version. I imagine they're still going to be like better than what we have on global at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why like Twigo's going confirmed here as well, man. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a little bit of a weird one. But also on Sunday, we're going to have Season 3 Knighthood Boss, and I prefer prefer this one to the current um uh, crit RNG Fiesta Knighthood boss that we have at the moment, because uh, this one is very easy if you bring in the Pierce team. Uh, it's just a really straightforward and easy way to do it, but I think for max score and global, it's probably going to be the Giant team with Blue Deanne that you get from the story, Matrona, uh, Goddess Liz, and also Marmus. Um, but again, we're going to have to see, because there's slightly different conditions uh, without, like, Super Awakening that we've got to deal with on global, but it looks like the boss is still going to be as hard as he was on the Japanese version, the extreme is still 180,000 CC, so that is a very big requirement. Um uh, for alternate teams without Super Awakening. I'm not too sure, even on my free-to-play account, if I can actually pass the CC requirement for Extreme. Uh, I might be able to with, like, uh, what is it, CC food or health food. Um, but yeah, this seems uh, uh, a little bit a little bit much uh, without Super Awakening. So that's what makes me a bit hesitant, because this boss, I don't think, was ever on the Japanese version without Super Awakening. And this is one of the things that they're very clumsily doing with the last couple of updates. King of Fighters, like the arcade mode and also final boss omega both of those pieces of content were tuned around super awakening and we didn't have that on global so it made those pieces of content um so much more difficult in comparison uh so yeah i'm curious to see how this guy is going to be without super awakening i imagine a bit more of a pain uh but yeah we'll we'll have to see there i'll do like a free to play run uh, and also a guide when it does come to sunday as well and also the account combat class buff is going up to three million literally on my free to play account man i have just hit the two million or i'm just about to hit the two million mark so i'm very very close and it's being pushed up to three million uh, but on my whale account, I'm like just over 4 million, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not as fast as it came on JP, because I think at this point on the... Um the Japanese version it was already at 4 million but I know this is going to be a little bit of a struggle and put certain players that are new and progressing in the game uh, even further behind when it com does come to PvP uh, so yeah a little bit of annoyance there uh, this is the um, benefits of the Nobleman's Club furniture items so this one increases item storage by seven I think that's actually uh, better than the one that we have currently I think the one um uh, currently only increases it by 6%, so that one seems pretty nice. Uh, is there anything else that looks really, really spicy there? Increase Enhancement Dungeon Reward Gauge by 14%. That one seems very nice if you're running the SP Dungeons there. Um, and then aside from that, I don't think there's anything like too noticeable. Maybe the Keg uh, increases Daily Ale Gain by 2 That can be quite nice for people that are looking to... Um, you know, just stock up on ale there. Uh, so yeah, some of the stuff doesn't seem uh, seem, seem too bad there. Uh, and then we've got ending bundles and also system improvements. They're adding in, I think this is Red Barn, from the part one ticket to the part two ticket. So this is uh, really annoying, man, just due to the fact that it puts another character in the part two ticket that you really don't want to pull. So keep that in mind as well before tomorrow's update that you probably want to summon on some of your part two SSR tickets. Um, in order to, um, like, what is it, avoid the chance of getting uh, a red barn from a part two, because that is really not going to feel too good there. Uh, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, but overall, tomorrow's update, man, I am hesitantly looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to summoning on the banner, being a massive whale, and also having saved up the... Um, the gems on my free-to-play account as well. I know PvP, I think, is going to be a little bit of a nightmare, but I've got some very interesting ideas uh, for teams to counter Goddess Elizabeth revolving around, like, Halloween Gotha, Omega Rugal, Keo, and also Athena's passive with single-target burst teams as well. So I don't think she's going to be as unstoppable as she was on the Japanese version at the point of her release, but she's definitely going to be a top meta, very annoying character to deal with. Uh, so, yeah. 
yeah, we're in for a little bit of a, a joy ride uh, tomorrow with Goddess Elizabeth. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you did enjoy today's news and update video, please do smash that like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Take care. And I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day.